Um, Rick Renane, everybody. Thank you so much. <laughs> So you and I were, let's chat for a minute, I'd love to hear a little bit about uh, <laughs> uh, the different facets, we were talking about a couple minutes ago, right. different facets of your musical life in the Valley. You play solo, you have also play in a couple bands, uh, give folks... Uh, right now I'm doing, a, I'm doing a solo act thing where I'm putting out a, I do a lot of studio work and right now I've been releasing a single every month for almost a year, the 10th one is coming out this Friday calling it the Last Fridays Project, and I'm putting out a single on my Bandcamp page on the last Friday of every month. And uh, the project will be up in May, and it's been a lot of fun. And um, I play out solo, and I'm also with two acts. Uh, one is with um, two of my local friends here that I used to play in a band called Group DeVille with, and we have an act called The Town Council, and it's kind of bluesy, jazzy, roots rock, uh, mostly original, most of my stuff. And I have a, a duo called the Prestons that I play with a songwriting friend, um, Bill Cataldi from Connecticut, the New Haven area. And how long, Rick, have you been playing in the Valley, first off, but also more generally, uh, how long have you been I've been playing? back in the Valley. I, I grew up, I was born here and, and grew up in Springfield. I moved away for a while. I came back about 22 years ago. and. I've been playing here kind of ever since, quietly at first, and then probably for the last 15 or 20 years with uh, various people. Sitting, I love doing sidemen work, and we all do, we all play and promote each other's bands around here, so it's a, it's a good time. And when you're writing lyrics, music, mm -hmm. on your own, you mentioned this monthly project as an example. Of yeah. That. What's, uh, tell us a little bit about what you're going for, either in that lyric writing or in that song writing. Well, I write a lot, and um, part of the, the, the fun is I can write for the acts that I'm playing with, but I can also write for myself material that wouldn't necessarily work with them. And the fun is in the self-editing, where you can recognize, okay, I write a lot, but it's not all good, and a lot of it gets thrown in the dumpster. But um, I would say about half of it lives to see the light of day. and. Uh, I like to have different venues to put it out in, and the, the one a month thing has been a good project. I had a bunch of songs saved up. I had about nine recorded. Everything except the vocals and the lead, the lead guitar or the, the piano or whatever. And um, I was going to put a, an album out, and then I thought, you know, everybody puts an album out. When I do something different, I hit on this once a month thing, and that way I could finish a song and put it out, and then finish the next one and put it out. And it's been fun, it's been a good way to do that, but now I'm running out of songs that are all pre-recorded, and the next two I've got to do from scratch, and it's fun, but it's been a nice exercise. Are you, do you sit down knowing that you're going to be writing a song for that specific song no. project? Or is no, no, it it's just, I just write a lot, and, um, and it, it comes out, and at the end of whatever the song becomes, some of them happen really quickly, and some of them take forever. And at the end of it, I figure, okay, I want this one for myself, or this one would be good for the Prestons, or this one would be good for the town council. Are there common reasons, like, consciously, that you want to hang on to certain songs for yourself? I think stylistically, yeah. And I think the stuff that I do, I can really stretch out and put, you know, pipe organs and, and strings on in the studio. I can add all this stuff, and I'm not beholden to anyone else's sensibilities it's kind of I can do what I want and if I'm writing or if I'm arranging a song for a band then I'm trying to think of what that band can do with it live my stuff it can be all studio some of the stuff I'll I do like this but some of it is just stuff I wouldn't even try to do live it's just kind of a fun learning process and I learned new things about tracking and mixing and I become a better keyboard player. Yeah. I don't uh, well, we want to get right to the music, but my last question was just whether you, given that you have this uh, presence in several different bands as well as, of course, the songwriting and playing on mm -hmm. your own, do you feel like you're, uh, maybe this is a, I don't know if this is a tough question or not, but do you feel like you're kind of yourself through all those bands or do those different components of 
your musical life feel like really different parts of yourself? They all feel like me. That's a great question. They all feel like me when I'm singing the songs, especially the ones that I write, which is um, most of them for the town council and all of them for me, and then half of them with the Prestons. But each band that I'm in, a band should be like a gang. You should have some kind of identity as a band and not like um, me and two guys. And I, I don't like that feeling. I like to feel like it's a, a little club and, and it's a, it has an identity of its own. So that's why the self-editing and the kind of deciding what songs, yeah, this would be great for this act and bringing it to them and think, what do you think? And they go, mm -hmm. Or, yeah. Usually you know the first time you try to play it. You know, either the whole room lights up and everybody goes, we could do this. Or it's like, hmm, maybe we'll put that on a shelf and come back to it. But, um, yeah, I think the bands need an identity of their own. And I've already got one, so I don't need to be me three times.